Hey gang, commercial photographer Tony Rosalind here again in the studio. Today we're going to go do a little DIY project with you, followed by an actual product shoot. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, like I said, we're going to do a little DIY project and then follow it up with a jewelry shoot for catalog. Uh, we approach catalog photography a little bit differently than we do with hero photography or advertising photography. Um, the idea behind catalog photography is to be efficient. We want to be consistent in our lighting and uniform in uh, how we present each piece. There's typically a lot of pieces that we have to get through in a short amount of time to make it cost effective for us and the client. Um, so I'll show you how we approach that today. You may hear a little bit of background noise today. I apologize for that. I have my daughter in the studio with me today. She's two and a half and she's playing with a bag of marbles it sounds like. So yep, there's, a, there's one hit the floor. So I apologize in advance about the background noise. We'll do the best we can to get it cleaned up and edit it out in post. But in any case, uh, when we shoot jewelry, um, rings in particular, we typically glue them down to a uh, Sentra board. You can put them on mat board as well, either one will work. Sentra usually cleans up a little bit better. Uh, we use a standard hot glue gun you'd find in any craft store and we glue them so that they stand up just like this wedding band is. Um, here is the engagement ring and we could position that any way we want to with the wedding band and then once it's on this piece of center board, we can put this in front of the camera and we can maneuver this at any angle we want to to get the best light and the best angle on the particular uh, ring set. Today, we are going to be shooting a pendant. This is the pendant that we're going to be shooting. Um, we generally want to shoot these straight on for catalog work, whereas with an advertiser hero shot, we may shoot them laying on a surface of some sort. There may be other props in it. Um, for catalog photography, usually pretty heads up and straight on. So the way we do that is by putting it into some sort of frame to hold it up in front of the camera. This is a pre-cut piece of mat board. You can get at any art supply or, or framing shop. Uh, they're a little flimsy. Sometimes you can get double walled uh, thickness, which would be better. Um, and we clamp this to the mat board so that we can stand it up in front of the camera. We can light the background with whatever color, generally white because we're going to do a KO or some kind of knockout um, or a retoucher will do that. Um, if you don't want to buy a pre-cut one, you can cut one yourself. Plain mat board is very, very inexpensive. Um, this is black on one side, white on the other. And I'm going to show you how we cut this out and make our own little uh, stand for pendant. So the tools we're going to be using today, in addition to our mat board, are a pencil, a straight edge, a small A clamp, an X-Acto knife, and a couple of C47 clamps. I'll show you how we put all this together here now. Okay, we've got our mat board cut, and uh, so now the way we get this to stand up in front of the camera is just by putting a small A clamp on the bottom, and it will stand up by itself, and then we can have our pendant clipped with the clothespins or C47s uh, so that it hangs just where we want it to in the frame. You may want to play with these a little bit to adjust the angle of the chain. You may want it more obtuse or more acute depending on what the standards for the catalog that you're shooting for. But this will give us a good start. We can get this in front of the camera. We can get it lit up and then uh, you know, we can position this as we need to. So let's head on over to the set and do that. All right guys, now we're over here on set and I just wanna take a minute to run through the equipment that we're gonna to use today for this shot. Starting with our phase one camera. This is an IQ series digital back. We're using a Mamiya 120 millimeter macro lens. We have a number three extension tube on here to get us even closer to our subject. Um, 
I am mounted to a really right stuff L bracket and on top of that or underneath that I'm mounted to a really right stuff mac uh, macro focusing rail. The focusing rail allows us to make minute focus adjustments rather than having to actually turn the lens. Um, the reason we need to do that is because we're so close to a product we're using a medium format camera and a, and a uh, telephoto lens our uh, depth of field is very narrow um, so we end up taking anywhere between 6 and 15 shots when we do something like this. We do a, what's called focus stacking where we take a shot, we move the sled just a little bit, we take another shot, we move the sled again, we take another shot, we'll do that like I said maybe 15 times. We put them into a piece of software called Helicon Focus which handles all the focus stacking and makes one sharp image out of all those exposures. Photoshop has this built into it as well, but in our experience, we found that Helicon Focus is just a little bit better at it, so that's the route that we take. Um, we're going to mount this on our Really Right Stuff BH55 ball head, which is attached to our Phobus stand. This gives us a rock steady platform uh, to shoot with, and we don't want to have any movement in this when we're shooting jewelry. Because we're so close, the finest movements will, will cause it to be completely uh, out of focus. So. Um, the last piece of the puzzle is our Tether Tools cable. We're tethered directly into the computer so that we can check focus and composition on a bigger screen than trying to do it on the back of the camera. So let me get it mounted up here and let's show you the rest of the set. All right guys, uh, on to the heads and packs that we're using. Uh, in this studio we use Profoto uh, packs and heads. This is, in a Pro Photo, uh, this is a Profoto Acute D4 head. Um, this one on the front has a zoom to reflector with a grid. I think it's a 20 degree, uh, 20 degree grid in it. Um, and this honeycomb grid just helps focus the light, narrow the spread of light uh, onto a particular area of our subject. The one here is used to just punch a little bit of light right into the front of our pennant. It helps bring out the uh, fire in those diamonds. Um, secondly, we have a Profoto five foot octabox overhead doesn't have to be a five foot octa, any large light source overhead. This is just kind of our general fill uh, for the whole scene. Um, we have another head behind the scene and it's uh, the same as this. It's another acute head with a reflector and a 20 degree grid and it's firing um, from the back of the scene and I'll show you what that's doing in just a second. They all get tied into this, which is our Profoto D4 4800 pack. We have several of these here in the studio that we use. Um, 4800 watt seconds, there's a ton of power here, so it keeps our recycling time quick. Um, we're using three channels with those three heads for now. Um, this, the beauty of these packs is I basically get four channels in a single pack. Whereas um, some packs only have two channels, uh, some mono blocks only have obviously a single channel. Um, the ones that do have multiple channels, typically if you move the power of one channel, it moves all the channels together. Uh, this gives us four independent attenuation, uh, for, you know, each channel we can adjust independently. So great packs, absolutely love them. They're bulletproof. Um, and uh, give us a tenth stop increments adjustment and we absolutely love them. In front of our set, we're hanging a Roscoe 3008 diffusion roll. Um, this is camera side diffusion. This just helps uh, diffuse, first of all, this light source coming from behind, but also gives us a little bit of bounce from the light that we have behind the set back into the front of our product to help with that general fill. We have a small hole cut the size of our lens. Um, this keeps the jewelry from reflecting everything else that's in the studio. So it's basically going to be reflecting the diffusion panel, which is essentially white, which is always better than all the other stuff in our studio reflecting into this bright, shiny surfaces of our jewelry. So let's walk around behind the set and I'll show you what's going on back there. Okay, guys, now we're back behind the set here and uh, basically, our overhead fill, again, this is that five foot octa. Here's our diffusion panel, uh, the uh, Roscoe 3008 that's hanging uh, as camera side diffusion. Um, the Pro Photo head with the 20 degree grid on it firing at the back of the set, like I mentioned before. Now that's coming through this uh, diffusion panel. This is one of the DIY panels we built a few weeks ago. Uh, if you haven't caught that video, search around and try to find that because it's a uh, tells you how to make these things on the cheap. I think they cost about 30 bucks to make these DIY diffusion panels. Um, we're using that uh, as a to shoot through from behind. It also helps soften our overhead light even further. 
Here is the uh, frame that we just built. Actually, this is one like it. I have several of them laying around, but uh, uh, this is the mat board that we just cut with our pendant hanging in place with our uh, clothes pins and then our small clamp on the bottom, which helps keep it upright. So what we're gonna do is just slide that right into the set in front of our camera. And we have to look through camera and make sure we get it positioned just right. But the center board that we were mounting the rings to uh, earlier on in the video, I have several pieces of that cut as well. We use it for all kinds of things. It's great for bounce, uh, bouncing fill into products and such. The reason I like this is because it's rigid. It's more durable than foam core. It's also really white, which foam core tends to have a little bit of a yellow cast to it. So we try to use this as much as we can. I have quite a bit of it. We're also shooting on a white table. This is just a <laughs> Actually, I got this at Ikea from the ding and dent section for like 30 bucks. You know, I think it was a desk or something at one time that some kid may have nicked in the store and they threw it into the clearance bin and I picked it up real cheap and we use it all the time as a surface. It, again, because it's white, it helps bounce light up into uh, the product and keep everything nice and bright. So these cards, again, we have little A clamps on the bottom of them and we use them to slide into the set as fill kind of on the front of our product. So we'll get a close up here in just a second to kind of show you what we're doing under here, but uh, we get them nice and close and I put one on each side just to kind of build a, a, a triangle around the front of our product, which really helps keep light bouncing into those stones, which makes them really sparkle and look really, really nice. So um, let me put the other side in and then I will show you a close up of the set. So we're sliding our uh, one of these bounce panels, these center bounce panels into place, which just held with a small A-clamp. And that just helps us bounce a little bit of light back into our product there. You can see our pendant is in place here on that uh, mat board that we had cut out earlier. And our camera is back here coming through the camera side diffusion hole that we cut. And this just kind of straddles the camera so that it helps bounce light back into the scene of particularly the light from the overhead uh, five foot octa as well as the gridded uh, light behind the set. So, okay, now we're back around the other side here of our set, ready to get shooting. Um, first thing we want to do, uh, I usually loosen up this uh, head coming from camera side. This is what's given us kind of our sparkle in the diamonds. I loosen it at the uh, stand so that with one hand I can move it around and kind of see what it's doing. Turn the modeling light on. I can move it around and see what it's doing while I'm looking through the camera at the diamond and or the pendant in this case, and I can see exactly what this light is doing. Once I get that uh, nice sparkle, um, I'll stop and lock it back in place. So uh, I'll do that now. Okay, that's all set up. Now for focusing on this, like I mentioned before, we're probably gonna do a focus stack here. So I typically start on the area that's closest to the camera, and then I'll move my sled one rotation at a time um, as it moves through the product, snapping a frame each time. One of the other things that we certainly do is shoot with uh, mirror lockup. So the first shutter click will lock up our mirror, um, and then from there, I'll fire it on the computer or sometimes I'll use a remote uh, to trigger it. Um, I don't wanna press the camera, you know, I don't wanna jiggle the camera again to actually hit that shutter because I wanna have as little movement as possible on this. By locking up the mirror, it keeps that vibration of this huge mirror in these medium format cameras to a minimum. Um, so the next shot would be firing for our shot and Looks like we got a pretty good start. So I'm gonna go ahead and move through these, capture the exposures we need, dump them into Helicon, and then uh, we'll show you the finished product, so. Hey guys, okay, so we're back uh, here at the computer. We've gotten all our shots. We put them all into Helicon Focus, did our focus stack, took them from there into Photoshop, did a quick retouch on them. We didn't really even have to knock out the background because of that, uh, Matte board that we used earlier is far enough off our background, we we're able to overlight the background to get a nice white uh, behind our pendant. So that saved us some time. It's a lot of contrast in these diamonds. We got good shine on the opal. The client will buy that all day long. They'll love that for catalog photography. So it's not magic. Piece of Sintra with a clamp, piece of matte board with a clamp, three lights and a little bit of time uh, playing with some Roscoe Diffusion. If you haven't checked out the DIY video on our how to build your own diffusion panel for under 30 bucks, definitely check that out. Those things, we use them all the time here at the studio. Uh, and uh, hopefully you pick something up. We'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot.